Hello, I'm Deacon Harold, and this is The Prodigal Life. And I'm joined, as always, by Nick and Ellen. And The Prodigal Life is here to help me help you make a deeper connection between your faith and your everyday life. Mm. Yeah. And we're going to talk today about a topic uh, mm. that, you know, it's got me real upset, this topic. It's got me real, you, you might say angry, this topic. <laughs> Just kidding. We are talking today, though, about... Righteous anger. What is it? How do we discern anger from righteous anger as Catholics and Christians in our in our faith walk? Um, have you experienced righteous, righteous anger in your life? Um, what's it look like? Where is it in the Bible? And like, can we use what happened with Jesus in the temple as a teaching tool? And you know what I mean? And how do we live it out in today's society? Because we're under some times where there's quite a bit of anger going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, so that's true. How, what does our faith, our, our catechism say about righteous anger? Okay. But first, here's a quick word from our sponsor. My name is Catherine. I'm the mom of three boys, and we love Lion and Lamb. Each box contains three books, and we get it four times a year, and we get it from Grandma. It's hard to find good content where you know that there's no agenda, that the virtue and the the point of the story is something that's really substantial. And so there are great stories out there, but it is harder to find, and it takes more time to curate as a parent. So to have three books every quarter that you know are solid and beautiful, it just takes a load off. Well, uh, let's go to the catechism and go to the source. Okay. And, and here's what it says about righteous anger. Paragraph, if you're following along at home, paragraph 1767. In themselves, passions are neither good nor evil. Right? So passions, what they mean here, that's a philosophical term. They mean emotions. Mm-hmm. Right? So they're neither good or bad. They just are. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. They're just feelings that we have. There's nothing wrong with them in and of themselves. They are morally qualified only to the extent that they effectively engage reason and will. All right. So in and of themselves, they're not either good or bad. But when they begin to affect our higher level Mm. of thinking and reasoning, where it starts to affect judgment, Mm. starts to affect the way we act, that's where it becomes an issue. Okay. Passions are said to be voluntary either because they are commanded by the will or because the will does not place obstacles in their way. It belongs to the perfection of the moral or human good that the passions are governed by reason. Mm. Okay, the passions are governed by reason. So when the passions overtake our reason, Mm -hmm. that's where we get into sins. Like, for example, gluttony, sloth, Mm -hmm. pornography, those kinds of things, where the passions take over the higher reasoning mm-hmm. and thinking processes. And that's where it goes from being virtuous to vicious. Right, right, v- from virtue to vice. Yep. Exactly, exactly. That's the defining. So, so mm-hmm. the same thing happens with anger, okay? It's when that anger b- overtakes our higher reasoning functions, mm-hmm. that's when it becomes an issue for judgment. Yeah, because as Catholics, a- our anger can never want to bring us to vengeance or to hatred or to any of those things. So I think that's the defining line. Like if you have an anger and it's causing you to have thoughts where you want to hurt someone or do some whatever, that's not righteous anger. That's mm-hmm. anger that's not well, let's, good. Let, yeah, let's make the distinction, right? Yeah. So so someone does something evil to you. Right. And you are angry because of what they did, because they hurt you and hurt a member of your family. Drunk driver comes, oh, uh, yeah. hits your kid, something like that, Some some someone does something very irresponsible that hurts you or a member of your family you get, and you get angry. angry. Okay. Now that's one thing. Okay. I think that's righteous anger. <laughs> when you're flipping somebody off in traffic because they cut you off or mm-hmm. uh, now, now it's a little bit, a little bit mm-hmm. different here. Mm-hmm. Um, or I, I think even holding on to a grudge, <clears throat> yeah. holding on to, 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 to that ang- deliberately holding on to that anger because mm-hmm. you want to be, you know, that, that, what that person do you was, what they did to you was so egregious right. that you can't let go <clears throat> and you don't even want to make an attempt mm-hmm. to let go of that anger. I think that's a problem. Yeah, it's yeah. a poison. It, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's giving, it's drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's what it is. Yeah. So ultimately, uh, you know, we we talked uh, some episodes ago about how we were made in the image and likeness of God, and as such, we are drawn to that which is good, true, and beautiful, and we repel. We 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 have an aversion to that which is um, ugly, dark, unjust, 
mm-hmm. uh, pain. We, we have an aversion to those things because we mm-hmm. are drawn to that which is good, true, and beautiful because we were made like God. Mm-hmm. Um, and we we have that righteous anger is coming from a place where there's something in us that observes something taking place, whether it's my kid getting hit by a drunk driver or my daughter gets raped or whatever. Like I, I'm observing something that is unjust, something that is dark and 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 mm-hmm. and uh, a product of the broken world, not a product of God. And right. and that we have this this inner turmoil and and this um, this repulsion towards, mm-hmm. and and that is from God. And mm-hmm. so it, it's like. In as much as I am reacting to whatever I'm observing, like God would react to it, it is it can be virtuous. Um, in as much as it's the flipping someone off or seeking vengeance or whatever, God ain't flipping people off, right? So you can almost break it down like that. Like I can be godly and angry about something. I can also be angry about something and very ungodly about it. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. when anger leads to hatred. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that yes. really hatred becomes and vengeance. an issue. That's the, that's yeah. the line that draws. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a great passage in Ephesians, actually. Mm. Um, if you uh, pray the Liturgy of the Hours of the Divine Office, this this comes up for you every Wednesday at night prayer. Um, it's mm-hmm. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 through 27. If you are angry, let it be without sin. The sun must not go down on your wrath. Do not give the devil a chance to work on you. That's, that's every that's time I right read there. that. If you are angry, let wow. it be without sin. Mm. The sun must not go down on your wrath. Do not give the devil a chance to work on you. Well, let's talk about look, look, the three things. What the first yeah. one? Mm-hmm. Read, read the first, first line again. Uh, if you are angry, let it be without sin. And that's what we were talking about yeah. before. Don't let it cross Where that anger line. Anger doesn't cross the line mm-hmm. cross into the line. vengeance. It does lies into hatred. Doesn't mm-hmm. line into mm-hmm. a, 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 doing things that's going to cause you to sin mm-hmm. or cause mm-hmm. others to sin in response to you know, a, as as a byproduct of your anger. Yeah. And also, you know? don't re- convert the anger to anger upon yourself because some people become oh, so true. distraught yeah, mm-hmm. that true. they will hurt themselves. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. even wanting to kill themselves. Mm-hmm. So you that that's the that crosses the line too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you are beyond redemption. You Correct. are beyond, yeah, exactly. You're beyond yep. forgiving. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, or if your child dies, you figure, why do I need to live? Yeah. 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 Just living with the pain. Right. right. Yeah. There's yeah. Exactly. there's so much there. The second thing, Deacon, uh, the sun must not go down on your wrath. See, we mm-hmm. talked about holding on mm-hmm. to it, yeah, on. Mm-hmm. you know, where it becomes, becomes to fester. Like you said, it becomes like poison, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and it kills the spirit. It kills God's life. Mm-hmm. Which is what God, you. which is what the devil wants. Which is wants. what the devil wants. Yeah. He, wants to, he wants to do everything he can mm. to, to separate you from God's love, to separate mm-hmm. you from God's life. And when something is done to you, mm-hmm. um, if, you know, that, that's evil and you're righteously angry, the devil just don't, don't want to keep it there. Mm-hmm. And he wants to, he wants to, he wants to grow foster it. and fester yep. and grow mm-hmm. it in like a like a plant or mm-hmm. a, like a virus actually a poison. Mm-hmm. And the biggest yeah. thing I think I think people are probably some people are thinking in their head because I can hear it in my own head is so like, well, why do bad why does God let bad things happen? You know what I mean? And you pointed out as you were ex- explaining in the beginning that you know a m- fallen man makes bad choices. Mm, it isn't that God, God wants it to yeah. happen. God God doesn't want any of that. He's crying along with you. Mm-hmm. He's probably angry along with you too mm-hmm. because we know that God can be righteously angry. I mean, Jesus was, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. And, and then it gets to that question of, well, then why does he allow these things to happen? Free will. And we were, we were talking offline as a group about this idea of the distinction between God's permissive will mm-hmm. and his perfect will. Right. And his permissive will are the things that He's he's not like doing backflips and excitement that these no. things are happening, but he's allowing bad things to happen sometimes because he knows that he can bring a greater good out of it. Think about the the worst thing that ever happened in the human race, other than the original fall, which was a travesty. But we killed God. We killed His Son. We killed Him. Mm-hmm. That arguably would be a thing that He could have kept from happening. True. <laughs> but he chose to allow it to happen. He permitted it to happen. I think about mm-hmm. all of the, in my own life personally, you know, in, in, in the 21st century, all of the pain that I have experienced uh, from whether it's relationships or, mm-hmm. you know, my parents' divorce or whatever. Um, and I, looking back now retroactively, I look back and I see how God's hand, I, I wouldn't have met 
the amazing woman that is my wife. And I, right. th- our listeners, viewers are probably tired of me talking about her, <laughs> but I would have never met her if it were not for the pain. You know pain. how many jealous women there are out there? I wish my husband talked about me <laughs> like that when Nick talks about Alina, you know? No, but really, like if my parents hadn't gotten a divorce, we would have moved to South Florida the, the summer right. after my fourth grade year, and I would have never stayed here in Bowling Green, Ohio, and mm-hmm. met her in high school. And my incredible four kids, y'all were just hanging right. out with them a little bit before we recorded yeah. this. They never would have been, oh, shoot. They never would have existed. That's right. Yeah, see? Yeah. Yeah. There you see, go. See, God's like, plan is so much greater. If we than allow we can him fathom, to, yeah. It's hard to see it when you're in it. When mm. you're in the sadness, when you're in the pain, when you're in yeah. the anger, when you're in all of that, you just you, you sometimes it just all goes red. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can't see any other color. Yeah. And it it it's you know, that's probably the time the most in your life where you need to like ask for God's help. Yeah, and uh, I, I've been there. I mean, I didn't talk mm-hmm. to my father for 18 years, mm-hmm. yeah. holding on to the anger. So I, you know, yeah. and, and that was before I was Deacon Harold, of course. But, well, actually, no, I was I was a deacon too <laughs> during part of that time. Um, but so were still, you a dynamic deacon? No, no. <laughs> 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 but still, but it, it goes to show you how deep mm-hmm. some of those wounds, wounds can go can in your deep. own life, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, when you allow something like that to foster. But then again, God can bring something greater out of it. It had not been all that. And then me being on EW10, my father watching me on EW10 is what led eventually yeah. him to his, the whole conversion wow. and everything. You see? Yeah. Yeah. But the, uh, and all that of woman, that and was that part of me, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, of our separation, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was just, yeah. it, God, is, God is so good. And what's that last one, that last, uh, yeah, what's the, the, the third last one there? the last line in that? Because it was very, very good. The last line is... Do not give the devil a chance to work on you. Yeah, see that? That's what he wants. Right. And what does Peter say? The devil's a roaring lion waiting to pounce. Mm-hmm. You know, same thing. Don't give Satan a chance to, to come into your heart, to mm-hmm. come into your life, to, to kill God's life. Because this mm-hmm. whole point is to separate you from covenant relationship with God. Amen. Mm-hmm. Was to separate you from intimate, personal. Yep. And focus on, you're so focused on yourself. And your hatred. And your hatred that you forget how incredibly powerful God's merciful love is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Has said in Hebrew. Yes. And, and so, and mm-hmm. we, we translate it a lot as just love, mm-hmm. but in literally it's merciful love. In fact, uh-huh. the new translation of the Psalms actually translate has said correctly um, as merciful love. That's yeah. That's incredibly powerful. We have to give room, extricate the devil to give room in our lives for God's incredible divine mm-hmm. mercy. Which is a good way to segue into the most obvious thing. And we may have some viewers watching that aren't familiar with the Bible because we already have established that we have a wide viewing audience in another episode. You know, let's talk about what happened in the temple with Jesus. But, you know, set that up for, for our viewers so they understand why that was righteous and what it was that Jesus was doing. Okay, so this is a quick, a quick overview of the mm-hmm. story. Yeah. So Jesus goes to the temple, and, you know, like I said, we, we mentioned before that the Jews go to the temple three times during the year, the Feast of Passover or Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of Pentecost, mm-hmm. also called the Feast of Weeks, Feast of Tabernacles, called the Feast of Booths. And during those feasts, they had to make a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So, that, again, depending on your financial status, Lamb, sheep, goat, um, doves. turtle doves, yeah, doves, things like that. So, so some you're making the journey, especially if you're coming from a long distance to mm. Jerusalem. You're not going to carry an animal that whole time. Mm-mm. So when you get to town, you purchase the animal for the sacrifice. And because they were selling these animals in the temple itself, Jesus gets angry, says, "You're turning my father's house into a marketplace." and I mean, I, I just Dennis imagine thieves. this scene. He takes a cord and starts whipping. <laughs> he thing. fashions a cord. He Fa- like yeah, creates, yeah, he a, creates a, a, a whip. A whip and he starts yeah. beating the, and turning over. To, imagine that scene. Your watch is going, what is wrong with this dude right here? Right. You know, because to him it's just all just normal, you know? Mm-hmm. And, it, and, and so there's a couple of things going on. First of all, they did not have to sell those animals in the temple itself. Mm-hmm. They could have sold them outside of the temple, and that would have been fun. and then brought them and mm-hmm. brought them in. Mm-hmm. Um, the second, where they was now, there were different. Um, when you enter the temple, there are different courts okay. or courtyards <clears throat> areas. So there was one for women. Mm. There is one for Gentiles. Mm. There's one. So where they were selling the animals was in the Gentile court. So what does that mean? There, they are selling the animals. The Gentiles were not allowed to worship. 
That was the other thing Jesus was angry at. Mm. They're preventing them from worshiping God. Wow. You know, and so Jesus is right. What are you guys doing? And his righteous anger overturns the tables and, mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, so people will take that mm-hmm. and, and, and point the finger and say, see, Jesus was angry so we could be angry. Yeah, he was righteously angry. Mm-hmm. He didn't hold on to it. He didn't, he you know. Didn't he, he didn't hurt anyone. He didn't kill anyone. He didn't kill anybody. It, it wasn't like, like he didn't talk about like a, a week later, ah, those guys still, mm-hmm. I'm still angry about that whole thing. Right. You know, he was, and he was, he was uh, uh, dealing with an issue that, um, turning it the, the temple into a marketplace, which it shouldn't be, and mm-hmm. also not allowing a group of people to worship that that had a right to worship in that space. Wow. Yeah. So that's what was going on there. So as a teaching tool in our everyday lived life, how can we implement that? I mean, like we see things every once in a while. You know what I mean? You walk into upsetting. a room and just look to make sure you know where the whips are. No, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but you know, I mean. There's a lot of things in this world right now that are causing people a lot of duress, even within our own faith. You know what I mean? There's there's a lot of division going on. There's a lot of different opinions about things. There's some things that are going on that are, you know, not necessarily, and people are upset. I mean, you, if you just go to YouTube or Facebook or anything, you're going to see that. How do you navigate that? You know what I mean? As a Catholic and a Christian in today's world. I mean, From what do you From my perspective— think? the first question always has to be introspective. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, there, there is so much in the world that I cannot control, mm. but there are some things that I can control, and that's where I need to start. And mm-hmm. what can I control? My own virtue, my own sanctity. I can, in cooperation with the Holy Spirit, cooperate more with the Holy <laughs> Spirit, yeah. Um, become a person, become a man of heroic virtue where I'm not complacent with sin in my life. I'm not complacent with vice. I'm not complacent with being less of a man than I'm called to be. And I'm called to be the best man I can possibly be for God, for my wife, for my children, for my community, mm-hmm. for for you all, for Awaken, for my employees. Like the, any degree to which I fail to be the man I'm meant to be, I'm doing a disservice to everyone around me. Mm. And if everyone in the whole world were introspective that way, the world would change like that. Mm. Um, and so to me, the first step is always in prayer, you know, go to adoration, do a holy hour, do many holy hours, and just ask God to reveal the parts of you that you're blind to, that you need mm. to make changes, that you need to offer up to him, that you need to turn over to him, that the parts of you that are that are wounded, that need healing, um, and 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 then pursuing that next step for whatever those things are. If it's a wound that needs healing, going to therapy. If or, or if it's a relationship that needs healing, mm-hmm. that you need to apologize. Go apologize in humility. If you know whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, to me, it's always got to start there on the inside on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And and to um, to to add on to what you're saying, I mean, you also need to control the the environment which causes you to be angry. Mm. For example, that's one of the reasons why I don't watch TV. Mm. You know, especially people who watch political talk <laughs> television yeah. or, or, or like, you know, or political <laughs> listen to political talk radio. Those folks are angry all, all the, the time because there's never anything good there. That's what that economy is. It's you have yeah, to be. It's always mm-hmm. about this, the yeah. issue and that issue and this mm-hmm. party and that party. And I mean, if you just surround yourself with that, you're just going to be pissed all the time Mm -hmm. i don't want to be around people like that i don't want to be like that that's Mm -hmm. why i don't watch that stuff Mm -hmm. you know well how you gonna know what's going on in the world i mean i mean is that the only way like if that was going on in the world Mm -hmm. you know come on i mean there's other other ways ways. i could get news and stuff that with that's more objective and 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 doesn't uh bring me to a place of anger there are people that are upset what's going on in the church Mm -hmm. you know again can you control that or who's in charge ultimately jesus is in charge Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to remember that too. So for me, for example, I'm not afraid to talk about difficult issues, mm-hmm. you know, um, but I, I do it in a way that's prudent. I think I do it in a way that speaks the truth in love, but it's going to be the truth, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even though it may be difficult to hear, but yeah. it's always going to be spoken of in love. Amen. Um, and, and it's never going to be spoken out of anger or resentment or blame mm. you know because ultimately what i'm what i'm trying to do is bring the message and what awakens trying to do is bring the message of jesus christ right. to, to to everyone that that needs to hear that message of love and truth and hope mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. right? And purpose, right? There, there is a, a teleology. There is a, a meaning and a purpose to mm-hmm. life. There's reasons why we exist. And to focus on that. Don't focus on the stuff that you can't control and ultimately in the end doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. All right. So Jesus is in control. Jesus is in control. And I decide, what's that, that song? I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so I choose to focus and follow Jesus, and I don't worry about the other stuff. And what you said about the uh, uh, controlling your environment and and mm-hmm. and being mindful of, of what your triggers are into yes. anger, Amen. right? Yep. It, it, it's that last part of that uh, passage from Ephesians. Do not give the devil a chance to work on you. You know, it's like, man. Well, I, if you know what your triggers are, don't walk into your trigger. Right, but but we're going to do it. You know, yeah. maybe we should stop, you know, like right. well, if it is, uh, you know, uh, it, regardless of which side of the aisle you're on, maybe it's Fox News, maybe it's CNN, but you're turning something on and it's getting you riled up and you feel like you're justified. You feel like, oh, there's this evil thing going mm-hmm. on and, and I'm doing something about it because I'm angry, but you're you're not really doing something about it. It's It's kind of like, you know. Uh, it, it's almost like a, a political porn in a sense, you know, it's like, you're, you're just, you're just mm-hmm. getting I, all these feelings, but it's and, not really accomplishing anything. We're not saying that you shouldn't be informed right. about what's going on, or but involved. if it brings you to a place of anger, yeah. that's, right. that's where I, I think we need to, you know, you mm-hmm. really need to, 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 to right. it's like gambling, right? I mean, I don't gamble. I, I don't, but if mm-hmm. say I, I were to go to a casino, um, I, I would say, to, I, here's my thinking. I said, okay, if I was going out to dinner with my wife, mm-hmm. I'd probably spend dinner, movie, popcorns, maybe hundred bucks, let's say. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what I'm gonna use at the casino. The money that I would have spent. And once that hundred dollars is gone, it's gone. I'm out. And I'm not going on a date with my wife. <laughs> right. But I mean, but I wouldn't I, 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 I wouldn't g- yeah, I yeah. mean I've I don't yeah. think I've ever no, I don't think I've ever gambled. Yeah. Uh I've been inside a casino, but that's only for a tour. But I've, I don't think I actually played any games. Mm-hmm. But and I would always prefer a date with my wife than oh, you know anyway. You know? <laughs> I'm with you. But I'm just saying yeah. my, my thinking would be the money I would have spent, and that's you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but but you don't see. But what happens is you lose the money. Oh, I know if I spend some more, I can win. I can get it mm-hmm. back. And mm-hmm. It starts this cycle, you know. And you don't want that to happen with anger, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah, you're informed, you know. But but you have to check yourself mm-hmm. and say, oh, if I keep watching this, if I if if I keep immersing myself in this, the anger I'm going to get. I mean, I remember one time after a talk, I was walking toward the green room. This is at a conference. I was walking toward the green room. This guy's chasing me down, asking about, what do you think about this, about Pope Francis said this, and da 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 I mean, he is like, I'm, living. I'm like, dude, I, I, I can't control Pope Francis. I don't know what, I mean, dude, re- relax. Mm-hmm. You know, and this about the vaccine, and da 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 And he's angry. Angry. I mean, he's not trying to have a conversation. He's angry. Mm-hmm. You know, and why don't we do something about this? Like, I'm like, Dude, you know, I, all I could do is follow what the church teaches. Yeah. You know, I, I can't control any of that mm-hmm. other stuff. You know, uh, not like I don't have an opinion about it, but if we're going to talk about it, let's talk. Let's not get into this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but his whole thing is so riled up that that almost became his persona. Right. I think the one thing that we can do with, with anger, righteous anger, or even just anger, even if it's not necessarily righteous, is to try and make it constructive mm. instead of destructive. What does that look like? So I have a dear friend, and she was watching what was going on in the school board in my local community. And she was just, you know, upset with all the stuff that was going on, that the critical race theory and the transgender, you know, teaching and the stuff. And she was really, really kind of upset about things that she was observing. So she decided that she would run for school board. Because oh. she has conservative, nice. you know what I mean? More conservatives, which is a big leap. You mm. know what I mean? Because she's a lawyer and a bunch of other, but she's like, you know, put your money where your mouth is. And she's doing it in a very constructive way. She's going door to door, knocking on doors. And she's, you know, meeting her neighbors. Not all of them agree. You know what I mean? There's mm. a, like she said, there's quite a varied opinion, which is what you want, but they're all respectful. They all at least open the door. They'll have a conversation with her. And she's doing it on a very grassroots level. So she's taking what really angered her and she found very offensive and she's doing something constructive with it. She's going, you know, talking to her neighbor, which is what Jesus would do, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. He would sit down and talk to the people. He is, and she's a Christian, and I think believe she's converting to Catholicism, if I remember right. But she's 
trying to do something constructive instead of destructive with her anger, like the gentleman you were just telling me about, what was he doing? Yes, he was ranting and raving, but what could he have done differently? Well, maybe the bar, you, we have to think lo, we have to think globally, but act locally. That's just kind of always how, because we're just one, we're a fish in the pond. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So if you want, if there's something that bothers you that you find passionately about, you have to get involved. Mm -hmm. Like you can't just complain about it and, and expect it to go away or get better. All it's going to do, it's the same thing I just said. It's like you drinking the poison and waiting for the person you're angry at to die. It's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. So like being constructive is always good. And like within your own parishes, if you're not happy with what you're seeing in your parish, I'm sure there's a board. Or there's a way to get involved. You can volunteer in the ministry. You can volunteer in the RCIA. Mm -hmm. you can, and you can do things with love instead of with anger, and you know, not yeah. correct anger or, or hatred or vengeance or whatever. You know, turn that fuel that you've got, that passion, you know what I mean, that might have crossed over, like we talked about, you talked about in the beginning in the catechism, turn it into something that can help your neighbor, mm -hmm. that can help the cause that you care about, that can help the children, that can help your family, that can help. There's there's so many beautiful organizations out there with people that actually care. Some might be misguided. We're all a little misguided at times. I mean, I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago. Are you? No. Are you? No way. So, yeah. you know what I mean? I, yeah. I don't, I think when we put people in a box and say, oh, this is who they were, so that's got to be who they are, mm -hmm. you kind of got to back away from that and go, well, I'm not kind of that person that I was 20 years ago, so maybe they're not either. Mm -hmm. And say, gee, mm -hmm. how can I make a difference? Okay, I'm not going to judge them on who they were. I'm going to get to know them for who they are now. Yeah, and, and, and in the context of a parish, there's a couple of things. First, you know, if you don't like something going on, maybe – you're the one that God's calling to be to, to be the one to make the Correct. change. Yeah. Maybe that anger is there. Right. And God's got to say, yeah, take that anger and do something with it. Do something mm -hmm. good. You do something. Don't say, well, they should do something different. Maybe mm -hmm. you are the they. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're the, be the one to be the catalyst to make change. Exactly. And the other thing we have to be very careful about, because mm. this, this I, I saw this in a couple of parishes where this was an issue. Mm. You have someone who had an abortion. Mm. You had someone who made a huge mistake, maybe end up in jail mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah. They're out of jail Happens. and, you know, they got a PO and now they're coming to mass. I mean, they, 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 they had a conversion experience. No, they are not the, same the person. person that they were before. This, the woman who had the birth, she would never do that again. Now she, she mm. you know, she, she drank the Kool-Aid of Planned Parenthood. Now she realized, oh my goodness, it really was a person. I mean, she's gone to confess all that, but they're Beautiful. afraid mm. because they're afraid if someone finds out what they did, mm. they're going to get angry and they're going to feel isolated from the community. Yeah, shame. And yeah. they're going to feel, that's why it's a lot of us don't go to church. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, what, but that's the, not what Jesus would do. See, that's what, that's what I'm saying. So we got, if we're going to be angry when we find out what someone <laughs> did, remember what Jesus says, don't look at the, 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 the splinter in their eye without right. looking at the plank in your own eye you first. Take that out. Mm -hmm. You got to take that plank out before you can go try and help another person because, yeah, we're yeah. human. We're and human. A, we're and sinners. on a practical level, you know, in, in an interpersonal relational level, whether it's a friendship or a romantic relationship, uh, maybe even your spouse, um, you know, I, I, I've taken to heart this idea of not letting the sun go down on my wrath. Um, mm. if, if I'm if I'm having a, a, a difficult moment in any friendship or, or even with Alina, my wife, like I want to deal with that. Right. I don't, don't ever go to bed. Angry. I don't want to go to bed with this mm -hmm. looming dark cloud above me and this other person, whether it's a friend or Alina, like mm -hmm. I want to deal with it and, yeah. and f you know, fess up to where, where I'm needing to make changes, where I need to apologize. Uh, I need to, you know, and that's part of, of, you know, being a mature, virtuous adult is like owning your stuff mm -hmm. and, and being humble. Um, yep. not, we're so resistant to be told that we're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, our first assumption is, well, they, they gotta be wrong about something if they're mad at me, you know, or mm -hmm. they're, they're not justified in being upset with me. Well, maybe, maybe they are, maybe you messed up, you know, maybe, yeah. you, maybe, maybe you've been messing up for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. and so I think that that having that humility and then if, if you are in a contentious dynamic with someone, like, what are you really looking for out of this? What kind of, of resolution do you want? Because so often we're, we're looking out for number one. We're looking out for right. me, myself, and I, the Holy Trinity, right? Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're concerned about why I'm upset. 
without really thinking about, well, wait, maybe they have some reasons to be upset too, you know, and, mm -hmm. and what can we, what, what kind of resolution can we find that adequately, um, with in full justice mm -hmm. acknowledges the different dynamics at play here mm -hmm. in yeah. humility? No, I, I, from my own experience, um, I used to be a yeller. Like if there were problems, like I just used, used to be angry and yell, mm. you know, as a father and stuff like that. And like, yeah. and then when I was like, why am I yelling? <laughs> because my parents' bar marriage was so bad. That's what they did. They yelled all the time. Mm. And so now I find myself doing the same thing. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. But even with my wife, sometimes I get angry and I yell. Like, why am I? Why is this even bothering me? Mm -hmm. In the big scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. Why am I so angry about this? And what I learned, go, going to exactly to your point, Nick was that I learned that the past mm -hmm. helped shape me into the person I am today, but my past did not determine my future. Right. Oof. A, re a yeah. deep relationship with Jesus Christ determines who I am. That's right. So to let go of that and to realize, you know what, in the big scheme of things, I'm not going to let that bother me anymore. Yeah, but you had to choose that. You had, you to, had choose to choose that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, you, and you have to choose that every time. Exactly. Every time. But then it becomes habitual. Yep, that's then virtue. Then it becomes... Oh, ah, you know, <laughs> I was just going to say it's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly it. Because yeah. the that's biggest exactly thing we it. have to realize is we don't know the other person's walk. We don't know what their life looks like. We don't know what their day looks like. We don't know why that person cut me off in traffic. For all you know, their mm. dog died this morning. Yeah. And they're angry or they're hurt or they're upset. Yeah. Or so they could be going to work and if they get late, they're going to get fired they're and they're going to support their family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We yeah. don't know, you yeah. know, and, and we, it, and it's so easy to project that, that judgment, you know what I mean, onto another person and then go back and go, oh, I've done that. I mean, I've cut people off. I haven't mm. meant to most of the time. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever <laughs> intentionally cut anybody off, but it's happened. You know what I mean? I've, I've been in this lane and needed to be in this lane before. That goes well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and all of that. And I'm sure the guy behind me is like, oh, my God, and flipping me off and whatever <laughs> else. But, you know, you get distracted. I mean, we're human. And so, you know, I always say this, just be kind. You know what I mean? And realize that you don't know their life. You don't know their walk. You don't know you know, what they're, they're, everything, you have not walked in their shoes. And that's like a very cliche thing to say, but you haven't. So like, you know, anger, temper it with love and temper it with compassion and empathy. Mm, empathy is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Temper it with empathy when you're angry, because you never know what that person experienced that they did what they did. Yeah. And it doesn't make what they did right. This isn't a justification. It's just a truth. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, all righty. So there we go. Righteous anger. So if you have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to fill them in in the bottom. Please also go to the awakenapp.io and you can get that at your Google Play Store or your Apple Store. Um, you can get all kinds of great content. There's this podcast and a bunch of other ones. There's music and prayers and a messaging app and all kinds of stuff. And we would love to have you come on board for with us on that and then deacon's going to tell you how you can support us if you're enjoying the content just go to the prodigallife.com and you will see different levels that you're able to support us financially and we've tied those giving levels to the hierarchy of angels and so you can literally become an angel investor in the prodigal life. Amen. And if you are a business owner or um, an organization and you like what you're hearing and you want to be a sponsor of the prodigal life, please reach out. It's very easy to get to us on the app at the awaken, um, awakencatholic.com or .org. Yeah, awakencatholic.org. .org. You can get us on .com too, though it works. Um, and if you're interested in that, we would love to have you as a sponsor as well. So God bless you all and be kind. <laughs>